Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we're joined by Joanna Jubilis of the Belmont Citizen Herald for our regular weekly update on the news. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Good to see you, Joanna. Thank you, Michael. Hope you're staying cool. Uh, trying. So some of Belmont's retailers are still struggling, even as we emerge from the pandemic. In fact, we're losing another store in Cushing Square. What can you tell us? I will tell you this, this was actually the first eviction that I am doing a story on. And it is uh, according to the uh, owner of the business, which is Agora. It's um, a gift shop located at 7 Cushing Avenue in Cushing Square. And it's been in business since 2010, so about 11 years. Okay. They specialized in products for um, christenings and weddings. And, and holidays, a lot of Greek Orthodox uh, people actually shopped there because these are things that he uh, imported from, from Greece that, you know, certain, uh, you, you can't get them anywhere else. Um, okay. You know, Greek Orthodox Christians and weddings, they use these fancy candles and, and they have favors and crowns that the bride and groom wear. And so he sold those kinds of things. And he also was a florist and did a lot of special events, but because of the pandemic, he lost a lot of business, obviously, all these events were canceled. And so he couldn't pay his rent from uh, August to November. And his landlord, uh, his name is Andrew DeWire, um, filed a complaint with Cambridge District Court against um, the owner of the business, whose name is David Metalides. Now, Michael, as you know, there was an eviction moratorium for, for even that even applied to commercial tenants. But okay. in this case, the judge ruled in favor of the plaintiff and Andrew DeWire. Now, why um, is th why is that? I think I mean I, I I can't get anybody on the record about this, but because from what I understand, the uh, the owner of the business is saying I couldn't pay my rent, I didn't have enough money. But apparently, the judge ruled in favor of the the plaintiff uh, mm -hmm. for a reason, um, and also the moratorium. It, it actually expires the end of June. So the protection is gone for him anyway. He would have had to get out of there anyway. This, this eviction moratorium was only until the end of this month. <clears throat> so he, he actually currently owes um, about $10,000 to his to his landlord. I'm not sure what will, what will happen, but, but what happened yesterday is I was alerted um, by many people, what's going on at 7 Cushing Avenue? There's police, there's a moving truck. So I went over to check it out and, and I found out by the Middlesex sheriff um, that was there that, you know, they were just following a court order. There was a court order for this for this eviction. And that's why they were there at standard procedure for a court order that they have to have um, the Middlesex sheriffs there. And um, so that's what happened. And according okay. to the owner, he's, he's going to try to find a new location. He's still in business. You can order on order online. Uh, they have a Facebook page. Uh, I don't know what's going to be moving in there. And the landlord, um, Mr. Dwyer, would not go on the record uh, with me at all for anything. So, and, and even neighboring tenants wouldn't wouldn't talk to me. Nobody really, they don't want to get in trouble with the landlord, it seems. Okay. But they didn't want to now, tell me anything. Well, that's unfortunate, but, um, um, you know, I, I, I suspect that it's good that customers can still buy things online and that he's looking for a new location. Yeah, yeah. And at least people, I think people got nervous because they saw the police and they're like, what's going on? It, you know, you think police, you think danger, but it's just standard procedure for an eviction. Okay. So Monday night was the second night of segment B of town meeting, which deals with the budget and other financial matters. It also was a long night with hot debates about the community path and tennis courts. Can, right. you, sketch, can you sketch out the evening for us, Joanna? Sure, sure. So there were two community preservation projects that um, were very heavily debated. One was for the community path, and they were requesting two hundred thousand uh, dollars for the right of way. It's it's called right of way acquisition. It's part of the process in the design phase, and it's required by Mass DOT. It's required by the state and. And for anyone who's familiar with this community path project, we're in line for a grant from the state. We, you know, we're eligible for this grant. So they really want to move this project forward. They want to move the design forward. And this is a necessary step. And what it basically is, is approaching anyone that's going to be affected by this construction 
um, whether it be temporary or permanent, just to, you know, talk to them about how they're going to be affected and, and there's, you know, there's funds because they may have to pay these people who are going to be affected. And one of the property owners is Frank French. He's a longtime Belmont resident. He owns FE French Construction and his location is 40 Brighton Street. 40 Brighton Street will be permanently affected by the path. And he knows that as the property owner, because when he bought his property in 2009, he gave 13.8 feet of his land an easement to, to be for a future path. So he went and he bought the land and gave, gave this easement to the state for a future path. But what happened is Niche, the um, design engineering firm that's designing the path, approached him recently to let him know that we may need an additional two feet of your land for this path. So he got pretty upset because he didn't like, like, it was kind of like a surprise to him that, that you know, he might have been like the last to know about it. And, and as a result, uh, in response to this, he filed this amendment against the 200,000 for the community path. He was basically saying, let's make it zero, right? And he's a town meeting member too. So this is what took a good chunk of time at this recent town meeting, a lot of debate about, about this amendment. And even Will Brownsberger talked and said, I can assure you, I can promise you, I will do whatever I can to make sure they don't take this additional two feet of land. And there was this very new development, um, Mike, that uh, Niche basically that morning, that same morning um, said, we can actually do the path without taking your additional land. So, so I asked Mr. French, I actually talked to him yesterday. I said, why didn't you just withdraw your amendment? You found out that you know, they don't, they're not going to need your land anyway. Why didn't you withdraw your amendment? Well, he said, well, there's nothing in writing that's guaranteeing him they're not going to need his land. But he just wanted to move forward. He had a lawyer lined up to speak at town meeting. And he, he just wanted to basically make a statement, which he did, made it clear that this, I will not, I do not like this. And hopefully, hopefully it'll make a difference. Um, his amendment was defeated. It was defeated by a lot, 192 to 64. But like I said, there was considerable debate. And then they went on to approve the funding and that was um, voted 200 in favor, 50 against. Now, jo Joanna, considerable opposition on the part of, of um, the abutters on Channing Road still exists. And I think that was part of the discussion yes. um, as, as well. Yes, um, it was almost getting to a point where they were saying, let's just, change the route all over again. That, that's right. One. So they, they really want to move this forward. It's like we, we that ship has sailed. This other route that they were considering would have required taking part of a building and the building owner didn't want to give up, up his building. So they basically were like, no, this is a, the door is closed on that and we have to move forward with this. But I don't know. I'm curious to see what will happen because now with this right of way acquisition, it, it is possible as Mr. French's lawyer was, was saying at town meeting, there could be some considerable litigation from, from people that don't want their land affected. In other words, they, you know, they could be taking the, the town to court and this now, could end up being very costly. It's, it's probably worth pointing out, Joanna, that based on the current plans, there, there's very little, there's very little in the way of plans to take any private land, but what's needed is temporary access to temporary. some private property for the construction of the path and um, a number of property owners uh, seem, seem to be suggesting that they're not willing to give it. Yeah, trees could also be an issue, right? Cutting down. That's right, that's right. All so right. Let's see what happens with that. Now the uh, other, other one that was very debated was the tennis courts. There was a request, CPA funds for $190,000 to add a tennis court at the Winbrook tennis courts. Currently there are four courts at Winbrook. They want to add a fifth. And the reason they want to do that is because the high school students need these courts for tournaments. They need five courts minimum for tournaments. And as everybody may have already heard as previously reported, the campus no longer will have space for tennis courts once the high school building is completed and the fields are you know, redone. There won't be room for tennis courts unless 
they build them over the parking, but that's going to cost like four and a half million as we previously reported. So in the meantime, they want to add this court at the Winbrook. And what happened was there was a lot of debate about that because a lot of people don't want the open space taken away from, from Winbrook. And they, they also said some soccer people said, you know, we use those fields for, for soccer, for, you know, kindergarten soccer practice. We, we need this space. It's like a, a practice field and we need it. Um, so there was a really a lot of a lot of debate. I don't know if you have anything to add to what I'm saying. No, I, I you know, it, it was interesting. You know, a lot of a lot of parents of young children who use Joey's Park, which is, um, you know, virtually ad adjacent to the, the area where the construction for the new courts will take place, um, were, were voicing concern about the impacts on on Joey Park, um, which which, you know, um, I, I think so, some some. Some suggested it even included, you know, colorful language that or inappropriate language that might be used by some of the tennis players um, that that that, you know, right. would, that, that, that would be something that they would want to avoid for their young children. Right. Um, I heard that, too. And the other thing was the process. They didn't. Some people complained about the process. They said there was a recreation meeting where this was discussed, but not enough people from the public knew about it. And they really feel like the public should have had more input before this decision was made and before this project was moved forward. Now, this was this was a very close vote, but it ultimately was approved. It so was close, 137 to 94. I thought it was pretty close too. All right, Joanna. Um, Do we have time to mention the other two projects that were not- uh, Of course, for, for sure. <laughs> They were not really debated at all. The, uh, Two other CPA projects were approved, $35,000 to renovate Payson Park. That's just for the landscape architect consulting services to assess existing conditions and develop a design to improve the park. So that's that's uh, the first step in getting Payson Park renovated. It's, it's one of the only parks in Belmont that hasn't been renovated since the 90s. And another $250,000 was approved for the housing trust, which is going to be used for a reserve fund, which is for opportunities to create more affordable housing in Belmont. All right, all right, Joanna. So, That's so what let, I got. let let me ask: uh, Town meeting isn't finished, and no. um, at, <laughs> at a minimum, it seems to be headed to uh, two more long sessions. Um, I believe so. <laughs> yes, I believe so. So, so what's what's coming up next? Well, next up is the, it's, it's actually article 16 and 19, which is enterprise, you know, approval for spending enterprise funds, but, and capital projects. But what happened is some amend, amendments were filed um, on these two articles because there's one project that's getting funded with, with the funds from sewer and water enterprise, um, that is going to be for two above ground 6,000 gallon fuel tanks. And so these are the, that's gonna be a big part of this next town meeting is debates on these amendments because um, I, I guess it wasn't clear in the way the article was worded that part of the funds were gonna be used for this project. And this project, I guess, doubled in cost from what it originally was estimated to be. And then there's the question of, you'll hear Mark Palillo, our select board member, you'll hear him talk tonight about how, um, you know, aren't we going electric? Aren't, isn't that the goal? Aren't, don't we have goals to be, you know, mission free? But then there's going to be Roy Epstein also speaking tonight. He's the vice chair of the select board. And he'll be basically be arguing against that argument that, you know, no, we need this fuel for at least another 20 years. We're not gonna be fully electric for at least an another 20 years. And also um, that the current tanks that are underground are not insurable. I think that's the big, the big issue. So I predict that, that um, these two articles will move forward, they will get approved and that these amendments will, that's my prediction, that the amendments will get defeated but not without considerable debate. All right. Well, we'll have to see what happens on that. And then um, um, probably um, by Monday night, we get to the town budget, which could <laughs> consume an entire evening. Is it possible 
of this could go on for, uh, you know, another night. I don't know. <laughs> but I do know you need at least, uh, you know, c- commit yourself from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. for town meeting. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, thank you, Joanna. And, Even though uh, there's a Bruins game. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Joanna. We'll, 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 we'll stay in touch about what happens in town meeting. Yes, we will. All right, you can find more news from the Belmont Citizen Herald at belmont.wickedlocal.com. You've been watching the Belmont Journal's News Now. I'm Mike Crowley, and I'll see you next time.